And I think, obviously, another core question behind like this whole project is supposed to be about self development. And oftentimes, I'll post that will start Daniel He Haju's videos or things like debunking some of the common criticisms of Islam or like some of the damaging mindsets that Muslims can adopt. And the reason I do that, even though it's not strictly, oh, this isn't about how to lose weight or like improving your mindset, but it's more important because it's all about frame. So like the way I can describe it is if you've got a Muslim who's a cultural Muslim and they've not gone through that discovery process of the deen and like wrestling with themselves in terms of why they want to believe it, then ultimately their confidence is affected. The everyday kind of level of confidence in terms of their identity. So that's for me, that's like the core of self-development in terms of if you've not even got like a confident frame where like you're going out in the world in a non-Muslim country, think about it. Like you're learning the deen or in terms of like, you've gone into the deen like that. And the same goes for a lot of these other du'at who like uh, invite people to Islam and people often say, oh, how come it's reverts that generally you're more on it and stuff like that. The, that's the reason because they've gone through that learning process, which not a lot of born Muslims necessarily might not go through. And the reason why it's important for self-development is because if you don't have that frame, it affects your overall level of confidence in who you are. So then everything else is built on the faulty foundation. So it's how they talk about uh, you're in sales, right? So even in sales, they talk about like how you have to have that frame. You can't enter the other person's frame. And then even psychology and pickup and stuff like that, they talk about the same thing. Like you have to have a strong frame and maintain your frame in this situation. And if you apply that to a Muslim in everyday life, it's say if you're in the office environment, someone asks about Islam, the one who doesn't have a strong frame there and they're like, oh, you know what? And they just mutter under their breath or oh, each to their own. And they're like looking to change the subject. For me, that person can't be like a proper, okay. That person can't be like a proud and practicing Muslim because they lose that frame. Obviously somewhat dependent on their personality, intro, extra, or the rest of it. But that underlying idea that I feel like you having gone through that journey, you carry that with you wherever you go. Do you yeah, agree? But you, you have to be, yeah, I agree with that. That's like the foundation. Like, I think that's the most important thing in my life. Because I feel like very strongly about what I believe. I don't think like, I don't know what else, what can shoot my belief at this point, but maybe something, how to be loud. Uh, but uh, basically, yeah, but you have to be smart about it. Like realizing where you're talking to, if I'm around, like all my family is not Muslim, they don't have this framework. I can't go there and start telling them something from my perspective where I'm, where I've gone, it's very deep. They are just on the surface. Like I have to get to their level and just try to push them to where I am with smart dawah. I have more time with them years. It's not like I have to do it now. It's more like, but living by example with the other people, it's more like being strong on what you believe, but also realizing you are surrounded by fitna here. And like these people have, they don't have this idea that you have this compass, like you have to, you have to adjust. It's tricky here, yeah. but yeah, I agree. Like you have to have a foundation. You can't compromise. Yeah. But yeah. Like I was yesterday, I had a wedding. There was a, my cousin had a wedding and there was a vegan girlfriend of my cousin. And she was asking me about halal and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, halal, it's all that. And she was like, vegans are because we don't eat animals because they suffer or something like that. But I think halal is better than regular meat, let's say. Really? But still it's a murder and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's fine. I like, I don't have a problem with murdering animals, by the way. It just has to be done in the right order. So my problem is, and by the way, your morality, where does it come from? This idea that animal is suffering, how, what you're an atheist. She actually said she's an atheist. I didn't have time to go through exactly. a lengthy discussion, but it's just, it's funny to, to discuss these things with the different types of people mm. who live different things, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. I was more speaking about it from the perspective of just the deep level of confidence that it gives you. And then it gives you the ability to carry your faith with, I repeat this. Yeah, often. I think I'm actually more, more harder on Muslims than on non-Muslims. Like when I see Muslims who are like sliding away or who are trying to be nice or something and compromise some of the things in Islam, especially for example, we have this problem with Hadith rejectors or whatever, like people just take some of the Sunnah and they just disregard it. What are you doing here? Like I'm more strict on them because I know they have some level of knowledge already. 
they yeah. shouldn't be doing this yeah. but with the other guys i'm not that strict yeah and it's just that i want to try and get people or muslims to have that same feeling of not necessarily that all the answers that like you said oh, yeah. even if you're a muslim for one and a half years we're born muslims it's still we're still on a path even if you've studied 10 years it never ends not that you necessarily know all the answers but that you have the confidence that the answers are there and it's just a matter of going and finding them if you need to and the way because i've experienced it i went to a majority non-muslim school when i was younger and the first kind of sense of that that i got was in religious education classes and the level of confidence that i had just from basic dr zakir naik videos because obviously mm -hmm. i was 14 15 and i was always somewhat extroverted and whatnot but in terms of when the teacher would ask a question she'd say something about islam and then be like isn't that right are they or isn't that and then i used to just go into some speech like dr zakir naik from what i've seen yes. and the thing is the whole everything was different in terms of most kids in that situation they're the only muslim okay if you want to get really like analytical people would say it's personality and stuff but it's that frame that it gives you it's that level of confidence that it gives you and that you only get that through learning and finding mm -hmm. out the answers and being able to communicate it in, in, in a certain way. And then, so it shapes you, then that gives you a sense of confidence in life in general. And then you can build on to that, whether it's health, fitness, making money, finances, getting married, everything, because you have a strong core, you have a strong set of foundational beliefs, like why people run to people like Jordan Peterson and stuff. It's that kind of idea. Yeah. Look, this is like the most important thing because it's power up. Just yesterday, we've got like a news, somebody died in the family, like in a car, uh, in a motorbike accident. A guy who's 30 years old, he's not like a close family member, but we've met and it was just like a shock. We came home and it's just, okay, this person's dead in a motorbike crash. And it's just, that's what it is. It can go quickly. Like you can die at any moment. You have to get ready and always struggling with looking at my, whatever, dunya possessions, materials, and then looking at, okay, but. My focus should be over here on the day of judgment. That's my North star to, to be really prepared because I can go anytime. I just drove like a thousand kilometers. I could die any moment. This is like the most, to be okay with dying is the most, I think the biggest, for non-Muslims, the biggest problem. They are trying to ignore this part of life, which is natural because most tribal people, even non-Muslims, like thousands of years ago, they knew like death is coming, they were ready and they had different ways of going around it. But modern people like ignore that. They try to do anything to distract themselves from the idea of one day you won't exist in this dunya. And that's to come to terms with that and to be okay with that. Not with the actual dying process because that's going to be difficult, but to be okay with just moving on and not obsessing over going to space like Elon Musk or trying to stay here forever in some AI machine. All these things are nonsense. Uh, yeah yeah so it's just that brings peace to heart that idea which is, but also it's you have this sense of okay but i'm gonna be held accountable islam is not a free ticket like i'm gonna be held accountable and i have to be ready and look at the ambiya look at everyone everyone's scared of the day of judgment so why should i be okay it's not gonna be easy it's not gonna be nice and i don't it, it doesn't matter what i think about it, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter people have this idea like oh but it's not nice or this Christ. <laughs> I don't care what it is. Like, this is the truth. Like just get to it or don't accept it or whatever. But if I know this is the truth, then what am I, what are you doing here? You can ignore yeah. it for what, 50 years, maybe mm. you're still going to die by the way. So yeah. you better get to it. There's that meme, isn't it? Like thick doesn't, thick doesn't care about your feelings. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.